Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I want to do now is making it last. It's time for another conversation. This is Making It Last podcast. I'm your host, Noreen Daly. This time around, the topic we'll be talking about is how can I treat others better than they treat you? This is Making It Last podcast, and I am privileged that you have no idea how long I've been trying to get this young man. And when I introduce him, you will understand why. I can I can label him under several categories. Justice of the peace, pastor. He's also an attorney at law. A celebrity in his own right. Yes, I can pick mm. on him. He's my friend. Omar. I'm not even going to try because I might mess up the middle name. Omar Oliphant, welcome. Thank you very much, Noreen. And it's Omar Zeddy Oliphant for the record. T- tell us what is that? What is it? Yeah. Zahir Duane. Okay, okay. Yes. I remember the Zahir piece, but I yes. didn't remember Duane. All right. No, I, I specifically introduced him with those three labels because then it could then inform whichever perspective that he decides to take. So, Omar, <laughs> how can I treat others better than they treat me? Well, p- part of the conversation is that we must first recognize that human interaction comes with a lot of dynamics which have to be considered whenever we're interfacing with each individual with whom we have to deal. And in doing so, there are three things that I suggest that we need to look at. We need to look at our core self. Okay. Number two, we need to look at our core values. Okay. And we need to deal with individuals with an understanding of who they are and where they are. So let's start with the Mm. core self. The matter of core self, in my perspective, is one which is important in interfacing with individuals. You must be free to be in a relationship who you genuinely, authentically are. And Mm. so if an individual is in a relationship, you you, you must interface with others genuinely from your I self identity. Okay. Who okay. am I as okay. Omar Oliphant? Who okay. am I as Noreen Daly? Okay. That is the first thing. Mm-hmm. The second thing is that we need to interface with individuals with core values. So when we're interfacing with individuals, there are some core principles that undergird our interaction. Hold on, I'm gonna stick stick up in right there as they would say. You said in terms of core self, what if somebody's listening and they're saying even at this stage in my life, mm. I am 40 and I am mm-hmm. still not sure mm-hmm. who I am. What then would be your response to that? And, and I'm, I'm saying <laughs> if you're at that stage, mm-hmm. it's good, number one, that you would have recognized that you are there. Okay. Number two, you need to take us, you need to go further. You need to find out who you are. Okay. Because if one does not have knowledge and appreciation of mm-hmm. his or her own self, mm-hmm. it is hard for you to share and interface with individuals genuinely. And how you interface with them will be affected by your lack of self-identity. Mm. So you need to find a way to sit and do critical analysis, okay. self-assessment. What do I like to do? Jot down on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. What makes me tick? What mm-hmm. makes me happy? Mm-hmm. What drives me? What mm-hmm. gets me moving? What mm-hmm. gets me turned off? Okay. That kind of conversation with yourself is very important. Self-awareness is very important. Noting how you feel in the context of other individuals when you're in, the, in their space. Noting w- how you think and approach life situation is very Mm -hmm. important. So I think you need to just step back Mm -hmm. from everything and get to that self-identity. Okay. 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 So So you're talking about the values. Yeah. The core values. Mm -hmm. So even within your core self, you need to have core values because yourself is going to emerge within a context of other individuals. And when you're interfacing with other individuals, it's not just about you. It's about Mm -hmm. them. And so you need to have some values under which you with which you are you're going to share who you are with individuals for example courtesy kindness respect for people these are core values that you need to have Um, and then it is important because how you relate to individuals will emerge from the value system that you have developed over time okay and is it 
somebody might be listening and saying, but but pastor, yes. where where would I or how would I develop these values? I don't go to church and and, yes. and I reg- or go to church at, at all. all. Yes. So where is it that these values are going to come from? And that is the, that is the question for each individual. Mm, okay. What is going to determine mm-hmm. your worldview? What is going to be the foundation on which it is based? Okay. Um, for me, time proven, time tested values mm, okay. are what for me stand. So whereas the world might have these shifting views, even in academia, you'll see that a study that was groundbreaking 15 Mm -hmm. years ago becomes irrelevant or outdated, not by virtue of time, but Mm -hmm. by virtue of new knowledge Knowledge. being added to it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying in the space of this world, what is it that is going to gird you in such a way Mm -hmm. that no matter what situations come, you have these values set. Okay. And then thirdly, we need to look on the aspect of... Individuals or who they are. Individuals uh, and appreciating them for who they are. Because many Mm. times we come to the conversation Mm. from where we are, what I think, what I value, Mm. who I am. And it's important for you to have those base, but you need to also have an appreciation of the the differences between humans human beings and be able to, when you're interfacing with individuals to appreciate that. Now with those three things down pack mm-hmm. in my, per, mm-hmm. in my view, mm-hmm. I think you're then able to treat individuals not according to the whims and fancies of relationship turns, but according to set principles and core values. So in that respect, it is important then to treat individuals not as they would have treated treated me mm-hmm. but as i would have them want as i would desire for them to treat me okay so it is no longer a perspective of how i am treated i'm treating you well because you're a human being i'm t- speaking to you mm-hmm. properly mm-hmm. because you you in you have inherent within you that precious identity or that precious viewpoint that mm-hmm. you are a human being mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so even if you treat me bad, I must then, which is the second plank, mm-hmm. I must then revert to my core self. That's right. So my core self underpins it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if I see you treat me in a way that is negative, mm-hmm. it is a reflection on you, yeah. which is an understanding, the third plank, which is an mm-hmm. understanding of who, who you, you, are. you are. And so I will look back on my core self and say, listen to me, all right, how you are treating me is not how I desire to be treated because I know myself. Mm -hmm. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I understand the perspective which I come to the relationship with Mm -hmm. and what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So you can treat me with your negativity, but as for me, my core self is there. And so I think Hmm. dealing with individuals who are negative towards us is going to be underpinned by our core identity by our core values and by our understanding and appreciation of who individuals are. And I think one of the things that I have learned over time, and this is the pastoral um, biblical side of it, Mm -hmm. is that I've learned a lot from Jesus Mm. because I keep saying that there's no way I would know that somebody is going to betray me. And I keep them close. Mm. But Jesus is not just spiritual, but mm. he has pragmatic sense. Mm-hmm. Because keeping your enemy close to mm-hmm. you is better than having your enemy afar. So uh, it was important for Christ to keep Judas close to him. Mm-hmm. Even though he would have known from the very beginning that Jesus, Judas would have been the, be, be, mm-hmm. the, be the betrayer. Mm-hmm. And I think that helps me in my perspective because you're always going to have the Peters who deny and the Judases who betray. Hmm. And the question hmm. is, hmm. are you going to allow the Judas, the Judas betrayal and the Peter denial to affect who you are? Are you going to let it get into your system where it eats you out, where hmm. it devalues your self-worth, where hmm. it breaks your, your drive and your passion? Or are you going to use it and channel it in a direction that unearths the beauty that is within you? It is always an opportunity when individuals relate to us in a negative way to step back, Mm -hmm. allow them to show their true self. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. you will respond according to who you truly are. Mm. So you don't let the evil change you. You allow the evil to motivate you to do good. Mm. What about somebody who's saying, but you know, 
Omar, <laughs> it might seem as if I am, for the men, the whole idea of being a sissy, it might seem as if I am being a sissy and not being manly. And what about for some of us as females who will say, but you know, it sounds like you want me to have people take advantage of me. Mm. What then is your response to Very that? Very good point. <laughs> I, 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 and I would say <laughs> if you're a man, your core identity is to ensure that you're leading. Um, your core identity is to ensure that you're on top of things. So a man should not think that he's a sissy, I would say, mm -hmm. for wanting to take the higher ground. I think it's an opportunity to demonstrate that you are in charge. You have to control your mental and emotional space at all times, hmm. irrespective hmm. of the storms that are raging around or irrespective of the evil that is thrown at you. It is your, it is your response that will ultimately make the determination as to what becomes negative or sure. not. Because hmm. you can do the world of evil to me and I'm not affected by it. Not because it is not evil, hmm. but because my identity, in my self-identity, my understanding of myself, my understanding of how you treat individuals, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding of human relations, my uh, mm -hmm. understanding of human dynamics mm -hmm. makes it important for me to always be at a place where I'm in charge of my mental and my emotional space. No one else can do that for you. And the moment we allow individuals to enter into our emotional space and to, to recreate within us something else other than that which we desire, they now become the controlling factor over us. Mm. They are the ones that keep us up at nights. They are the ones that make us upset every time we see them. <laughs> um, when sometimes mm. they, they don't even care. Mm. So the mental health aspect yeah. of it and the emotional health aspect of it, for me, are key. And you must be able to find who am I? Why am I doing this? And the, the part of that conversation, Noreen, mm -hmm. comes with the reality that you cannot be deterred by criticism and you must not allow praise to direct you either. You, you must be in a place where you are the one who is in control of this mm -hmm. individual. Mm -hmm. You are. Mm -hmm. So if a person gives you praise, so, right. if a person gives you criticism, you take both mm -hmm. because they come with life uh, and you assess it. But you don't allow that to be your locus. If it becomes your locus, mm -hmm. you would have you would have allowed something else to determine you and to determine how you react and how you engage. And it's a reality that we do have to interface every day with individuals. Yeah. Some True. who don't like us, some mm -hmm. who try to uh, be very... Um, nice before mm -hmm. us and they're wicked behind the back it's mm -hmm. it's it's part of the reality mm -hmm. of it's life, life. Mm -hmm. and if we don't if we don't have a proper philosophical pragmatic approach to it then it's going to eat us out mm -hmm. and i've seen many individuals who have lost their jobs who have walked off jobs who have lost their families because of external variables mm -hmm. which have made their way inside and internally eats them out to the extent where they are no longer able to be themselves. If if you had to sum up all of what you said, let's say in a three-step process, what would that three-step process be? Mm, a three-step <laughs> process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number one, mm. I have found that maintaining a solid, bona fide relationship with God is critical. Okay. That's for me. I, mm -hmm. I can't, mm -hmm. for me, it works. Okay. God does, God doesn't just prepare me for the world to come. He's preparing me for the hardships and challenges of life. Mm -hmm. And I find that my self identity is formed. My core values mm -hmm. is formed by my interfacing with God on a personal level. Okay. Number two, I've found that reading good books work. Spending time with good people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the people are not even alive. They're mm -hmm. dead. But the books and the legacy that they have um, continue. And they help us. And so finding resources that help in clarifying um, our core self or core mm -hmm. identity. Helping us understand how to relate to individuals. Because listen, Noreen, there are a lot of people out there who just... 
they're frustrated with themselves. Mm -hmm. And when they come into your space, they want to put their, their frustration on, on you. you. And if and <laughs> if you don't learn that, you're 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 going to you're going to be, you know, so you have to find resources. Mm -hmm. Um, whether they're human resources or as I say, books mm -hmm. and other material, mm -hmm. which can help you to clarify yourself, help you to understand how to relate to individuals okay. um, without losing your self-identity. So number one, I think is a strong bona fide relationship mm -hmm. with God, which I think is something which is sometimes scant, scantily treated. Tre yeah. Um, behave as though mm -hmm. th there is this idea that spending time with God somehow is just this intellectual, philosophical <laughs> uh, thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's an experience. Mm -hmm. Where God wets you, he opens your appetite to see things that you don't even see. And he prepares you True. through his Holy Spirit. So you're able to be in a storm and be calm, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I find that works for mm -hmm. me. Um, and number two, I find resources. Mm -hmm. And the but third one? I think developing a good support system is yeah. something that okay. is really mm -hmm. underrated. I think we live in a world that has become so individualistic Mystic. where we don't think that the, the the support that we can get from other mm -hmm. individuals mm -hmm. can help us. And you have to find individuals of like minded nature yeah. Yeah. and thought and, and, and thinking. If you are continuously advancing and you have people around you who are who are trying to tear you down, mm -hmm. you, you have to make a decision as to the amount of time you're going to actually spend with them. Yeah. You yeah. have to make a decision yeah. as to the support base mm -hmm. that you're actually mm -hmm. going to have around you. People, you need to surround yourself with people who have the same regard to the values that you have, to, mm -hmm. the, to the thinking mm -hmm. that you hold mm -hmm. to. Um, there's a reason why rich people, they billionaires the fortune um 50 rich mm -hmm. people in the world mm -hmm. are are how they are mm -hmm. they stick with each other that's right bill gates and warren buffett mm -hmm. are very good friends mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and um they are among the richest men in the world and i think mm -hmm. a good support system is very important mm -hmm. so i would say those three things if you have them i think it can help you to clarify because even when you feel that you're strong, sometimes you you become weak and um, you need individuals around you who can help you along. Yeah. This is one of those conversations where I have nothing more to add around to say, thank you, Omar. <laughs> this has been making it last, where it's all about helping people to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. I'm Noreen Daly. Until next time. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I want to do now is making it last.